AI is generating images, voices, facial recognition software, it can program, might even be able to think for itself. And I think that's what AI can take away from people. It's taking away our human aspect, the creativeness yes. that each human has. AI right now is the worst that it will ever be. Podcast 14, Ben, we are here. We got our man Brian on the audio system. Brian we is are here tonight. Yeah, Brian is here. One day he'll make an appearance. Someday. Don't know when that will be. Maybe once we actually... Maybe a thousand, a thousand subs. Thousand, thousand subs. subs? Thousand subs will put Brian on the podcast. Yeah, he might be wearing a mask. You gotta keep some There's gotta questions. be some like mysterious like or, aspect of yeah, Brian. Or is Brian even real? Is he AI? Oh, true. You know what? Speaking of AI, that's our topic for today. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great transition. We, were great getting, transition. we are so good at this now. But I think we talked about the internet a lot the last, the last two podcasts talking about specifically social media and how it's kind of affected our, our minds, how it's changing, how we think and interact with society. And AI right now is huge. It's popping off. Everyone's talking about it. A lot of people are using it. And I think that's something we need to need to discuss. Is it is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or is it even more than just good or bad? I think it's like everything else that humanity makes, right? It's a tool. It's been created. It's very helpful. It's got a lot of uses, and it's not going anywhere. It's like the sword, dude. I mean, it can be used for a lot of good things, like slicing bread, right? Like you can make an AI-generated image of uh, bread being sliced. You can. The the, the sword <laughs> eventually turned into the knife, right? Or maybe it was a knife that turned into the sword. <laughs> dude, I can imagine, like, a blacksmith, he's like, all right, I'm going to make this new thing. Like, I'm, what making, is this I'm gonna make it huge. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what can I use this for? Oh, whoa, look at that bread right there. What if you just like chop? Whoa, now I can make a sandwich. <laughs> it's like, it's like then he, he invented the sandwich. Exactly. That's actually how the sandwich. But that's that's invented. what AI can be used for, right? Like it's that it's that thing where you create it for one simple thing, but it actually has a bunch of different uses. Now, like you said, we're here to discuss whether or not AI is good. Because there can be a lot of really bad things that can be done with AI, which I think a lot of the audience understands as well. And I think one of the things we want to do in this podcast is kind of discuss what those bad things are and then how we can try to avoid them. I, I agree. And I think AI, when people think of AI, a lot of people just go straight to chat GPT. They go into these new search engine type things. It's like it, they're really, really cool. You're able to put in whatever you want and you get a, an answer. The problem is... Do we for sure know that the answer is correct, first off? People always say, don't believe every, everything on the internet. But when it comes to AI, everyone's like, oh, this AI said this. It has to be true. Oh, man. It's absolutely crazy. Bad, bad rabbit hole right there. 100%. And I, we might we might pass that a little bit right now. AI is way more than just chat GPT. AI is generating images, voices, facial recognition software. It can program. And in some cases, people talk about it. It might even be able to think for itself. Yeah, uh, that I think that's going to be further along the road in like the development. But I mean, that's almost unavoidable at this point. I think we're we're going to get to there sooner rather than later. Um, another thing that it can really do is impersonate, right? Mm -hmm. It impersonates human beings because we create AI. AI is supposed to be like us. We're trying to create our own image, and I think that that's a bad thing when we're trying to create things that are like ourselves because it's like an unnatural form of humanity. But that being said, there are a lot of practical uses for AI. But I think we should start off the conversation just talking about different aspects of like where AI is used in everyday workflows. Yeah. Namely, we could say content creation. Celsius. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like pipeline generation for different companies. You said facial recognition is a big one. Art. Music is huge, too. Like sound and stuff like that. Well, if AI can, like you said, AI is a great tool. And we should be using it as a tool. But right now what we're seeing, because AI is just was thrown into the public, and people people are creative. People are going to figure out ways to do different things. We we know people are making videos with AI. They're just completely just making – putting in a prompt, they get a video out. Putting in a script, they get a voice. Stuff that would take an editor and a voice actor and a team to, to work on for like a day, hours, days. They're mm -hmm. able to do in minutes, which is super, super cool. But is that making us worse? Is that making us better? I think it's making us lazier, right? When you have, like, the golden 
the golden opportunity at your hand, something that can literally do all of your work for you, and all you have to do is just input a couple very easy and simple commands. Something like, for example, there's a YouTuber named Trung or Jensen Trung, and he just showed that you could create an entire YouTube channel just using AI. And he made a channel called Facts with Frankie, where he would just type into ChatGPT and say, hey, what are 100 facts? Or like, what are 50 facts? And then he would make a YouTube video of an AI generated voice just saying those facts with like a simple background, like playing Minecraft or something like that. Boom, instant video, instant views. Yeah, and anybody who's been on the internet recently has seen those kinds of videos. It's that voice, things like voice, like the Adam voice or whatever it is, and it's that same kind of video. They're 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 engaging. It's different. It's like a new that that new trend right now, and everyone's just jumping on top of it. And it is making some people very lazy. It's making some people a lot of money. When we first started out, we used it as a huge tool. We didn't know how to generate clips. We just learned how to edit like a month and a half ago, and we're using Opus AI to edit our long form content down into bite sized clips. And it helped a lot. We we're able to get clips from that, but we saw that they weren't perfect. They weren't what we wanted. It it it, it lacked actual like on authenticity. Yeah. And I think that's what AI can take away from people. It's taking away our human aspect, the creativeness yes. that each human has, and that is very, very scary. AI takes away humanization. This is one of the things that a lot of people have said about content that's created just from AI, is that it lacks that little creative aspect of something, right? Casey Neistat made a vlog where he just generated he, a script that was completely made from ChatGPT. He just said, write me a script of doing a vlog in New York. And, you know, it did, like, really simple stuff. It was, like, you know, do a panorama shot of, like, New York and the sunset and blind and stuff. But, like, you know, just doing what the AI told him to do, it ended up being a really boring video. Because it doesn't have the human aspect to it. No. And and we look, a lot of people look at humans and it's like, oh, yeah, it's all done before. It's We're boring. It's something new. We want something exciting something new with the next, like, thing. Mm -hmm. And AI was like, oh, this is going to be it. Mm -hmm. But we're always going to miss that human aspect of it. Yeah. And it goes even into, like, shopping, right? So you go to checkout, and now we have all these self-checkout kiosks. And it took, took away the human aspect, took away, taking away our jobs. Mm -hmm. And, yes, it's convenient to, to some, some point, but it's we're, – we're disassociating ourselves with society on a regular basis. We don't even realize We it. have to remember as a society that the content that we create, our audience is human, right? Yeah. And it's easier for a human to be able to connect with humans than it is for a machine to connect with humans. I mean, if you're generating, like you're putting all of your human creativity into a machine and you're expecting the machine to be able to pump out content that connects to humans in the same way that you could normally, it's not even close, right? No, we have souls. No. We, we, yeah. have, we have an, an actual spirit, a soul to our, to our being. Yeah. I said and, no to that, but I didn't mean to say yeah. no. I meant to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. We have so souls, Ben. No, we do, <laughs> we do not have souls. Uh, but we, so we, we have souls. We have a that human aspect that people you really can't wrap your head around you or really point at. It's it's a soul, and you can't replicate that no matter how hard you want to try. AI is going to get very very good. It tricks a lot of people. It's tricked me many times with the, the, the deep fake voiceovers and all, everything else it's able to do. Oh, they're outrageous. It's outrageous, but it's not human. There's no soul, and it's very – if you look at it, you can see there's something missing. It's disconcerting, and it's disingenuous at, at the very core, right? When you create something that's supposed to impersonate someone, like there's just a blandness that is like it's, – it's offsetting. Right. It's completely disconcerting. It puts you out in the middle of nowhere because you don't really understand. It's not coming from the actual source of what it's trying to impersonate. Like all those AI sketches of people pretending to be like Barack Obama, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. They're completely ridiculous because you know that these types of people would never say the things that AI says, right? People, be people, people actually believe that these are real at, at, at times. Yeah. And that's what's scary. We mentioned death scrolling and mm -hmm. the dangers of like being on social media for a very long time. And those AI-generated videos prey on those people perfectly. They've watched, like you said last time, they can watch up to 500 videos at a time. And then they hear these 
AI generated voices from like Joe Rogan who or who whomever and they're like oh wait Joe Rogan said this the one that's huge right now is Elon Musk talking about a new cryptocurrency that he made oh my gosh yeah and it's getting people to throw money at it and they're they're literally spending they're they're it's a scam they're getting yep. scammed and they don't realize it it's 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 sad. I remember there was another really big one of an AI generated voice of Joe Rogan talking about there was some financial hardship program that the government was doing mm-hmm. to basically give like the government's giving six thousand dollars and it's Joe Rogan speaking in like a very monotone voice, which is the only reason that you can understand that it's AI. But you have to understand AI right now is the worst that it will ever be. It's and only that's scary only going to get better it's only going to get better yeah these people are i mean if you're going to scam like they're doing a decent job of trying to figure this stuff out like they're running ads with joe rogan's ai voice like you know how much joe Rogan would cost to run an ad they're able to do it for free because he has so much content out there they're able to take his voices mm-hmm. like i can if i can figure it out I'll, I'll ai and make you say whatever i want right now yeah and how do you how do you litigate it right because you can just argue like it's not joe rogan's it's not joe rogan Right, no. he's saying it. Like, how can he sue them? Like, they're they're using like his voice, and they put his like image on it, so it seems like it's coming from him. It's gonna be really dangerous because these guys can use any voice, any face, anything to sell anything, and that's what's really scary about it all. At some point, it's gonna become so good that you will not be able to tell. No, and that is what scares me the most. It's scaring a lot of people. Is what is real? What is fake? There's already a huge worry about what the news is telling you, the right actual news. Because there's really no way of knowing unless you've been there. You're just hearing from a third party, from the heard from somebody else, the heard from somebody else, and now adding AI into it, knowing that they can fake something. Is it fake? Like we said, like AI can do stuff at a much more efficient pace than a lot of humans can. And so what happens when there's a war, like, for example, the war between Russia and Ukraine or the war between Palestine and Israel right now, where you could just set an AI to just throw out a bunch of stories everywhere, just sending out articles, writing articles of some random person who supposedly might be dead. All of a sudden, one big news agency picks it up without totally clearing it. All of a sudden, they post a fake story that was written by an AI. And there have been cases where that's already happened. Nothing like too wide mainstream, but there have been very isolated instances where I think there was a really small Texas Gazette newspaper that posted like the story of a child that had been killed and it blew up. And then people realized within 24 hours that it was a complete fake story. Yeah. And that was AI that wrote that. And, you know, that's really scary. AI had also created images and stuff like that of the, the child that was dead, and that's how they thought it was real. It's it's crazy. And I mentioned a little bit uh, at the beginning of the podcast talking about how people just trust stuff on the internet, right? You just look, see it, you just want to believe it. A, a human just want to believe what they see. And we saw, remember back in the day, there was the – these these kids faked Justin Bieber eating a burrito sideways. I remember yeah, that. It was, yeah, it was so funny. It went national just because they faked this thing. That's people faking stuff. Now they have the ability for AI to fake anything. Yeah, and it's gonna be crazy. Ron DeSantis actually did this in his campaign where he was doing an ad that was anti-Trump, and he used a bunch of different photos of Trump with Fauci. Uh, you know, Trump shaking his hand, giving him a hug, just like general photos that people have taken in the news. But there was one photo that he used in his ad, a literal picture of Donald Trump kissing Fauci on the cheek. And it was AI generated. And you can look this up. It's crazy. He actually used this in his real campaign. And he said there was like a thing underneath that said real photos of Trump. And he got a lot of backlash over it because people were – everyone saw it was obviously fake. You could tell, like, in the lettering in the background was all jumbled up. And yeah. you could tell AI made it. But like we said, AI is the worst right now than it will ever be. It's only going to get better. And those types of images, fake images of a political opponent or someone that you don't like, you could just post them, defame them. And there's really no way – if AI continues to get better, there's no way that you could really prove them wrong. It's no. going to get harder. Yeah, I mean, think about this. If, if AI gets better and you have a political opponent that you don't like, 
you can make a fake video of them. You can make a fake audio recording. Fake audio, of them. yes. You can fake anything, fake documents, fake whatever you want, and you can you can use that and t- to push them out of office, to make them scared, to blackmail them in some kind of way. Because I mean, we do so much on a regular basis. You're not going to remember everything you do, and it's it's going to be absolutely crazy. And with AI, and you mentioned generating images, like I found this AI and I was like, oh, I'm going to play with it a little bit. And I was able to make, I put in prompts for like one of our, our Halloween clips. And I'm like, hey, create kids trick-or-treating. It created kids trick-or-treating. Hey, put I put kids trick-or-treating with a pillowcase. Kids trick-or-treating. With, it just, it made these images instantly. instantly. Like I couldn't go find a picture of a random kid. And it's also weird to find a picture of a kid and post it on a store, but it's able to do that. And we're seeing you're able to AI generate almost anything now. You know what? It goes both ways, too. Because what if you have done something wrong and you're in the court of law and you're trying to convince the jury or the judge, whatever type of court it is, that you didn't do anything wrong and that you've been defamed by AI. And you can legitimately start making a, a case that AI has defamed you, even though you might have actually done something right there's a video of you doing it but is that video real like how like in the future when we start getting better and better at this stuff how are we actually going to prove wrongdoing in any one of these cases like you just showed like you can make images of kids trick-or-treating pretty soon you'll be able to make videos of kids trick-or-treating if you can make videos of kids trick-or-treating you can make a video of anything yeah it's it's absolutely insane and we've talked a lot about this in in this podcast about issues that males have it's it, it just not just males but a lot of people have with the over sexualization in society and we are seeing people are able to ai generate adult stars and videos of adult stars and it's gonna and i personally think that in a couple of years as ai gets better that's gonna be the industry is all fake it's all it's just nuts and if you all we talk, mentioned also being on social media late and how they send you videos you don't want to see and there's videos that you can – there's AI that can generate and remove certain pieces of clothing Yeah. to show anybody. And the thing with AI is that it can continue to do it at an incredibly fast rate. Yeah. It can just pump out images like nothing else. It's going to take the human aspect out of it. It's going to continue to promote this just disgusting habit addiction that all these people have that – they, no one's actually getting help, but just being fed. And this is going to fuel the fire and push this even further than it is to this day. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, it exploits humans. Like, it, it exploits our aspect. Like, we want things to be more convenient. We want things to be easier. And this is what AI does. Like, it takes every single aspect of everything that we can possibly do, and it either makes it 100% worse or it could make it 100% better, Right. And we haven't t- we haven't touched that topic yet of the things that AI does that are good. We'll get there, but like we said with this, like it's a very serious topic that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. Because sooner or later, AI is going to be too powerful. It's gonna be too late. I mean, it's Elon- not gonna be Skynet, but maybe it will. Could be. Or maybe I'm just saying that to be on the good side of AI. Maybe we are AI. Oh, one, you know, that's, <laughs> see, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Because what if we were? Yeah, you know, you. Did- People that don't know us don't know if we are or not. Yeah. But you mentioned, like, the warning signs. Like, Elon Musk, one of the smartest people of our generation, we can argue, right? He has been saying, hey, AI is dangerous. We need to not push this out. We need to figure out what it actually is and how to use it effectively. Because if you just send it out to the public, we saw immediately everyone started cheating on all their their tests. Oh, yeah. Make, writing all their papers. And then people had to make AI to see if stuff was AI generated. Then people figured out, okay, well, they're figuring out this is AI generated. I'm going to make another AI that makes it untraceable that it was AI. And there, it's just like <laughs> it was a weird cycle that you they're have continuing. AI to... literally creating more AI now. It's nuts. I saw this one thing that you can go to this AI, create an AI program for something, and then start selling it. And it's like, it's, it's nuts. And it's, dude, the internet. And AI is just, it's going to spin out of control. We have no control of what's going on. And I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the government coming and intervening for things. But it's going to take a huge 
sap as a, a society and go, okay, wait a minute. This might not be the best for all of us. Let's think about this for a second and then make decisions. That's what we need to come back to. We are all human. We are all trying to be better every day, be, live our normal life, not have to deal with BS. This is one of those things we need to talk about together. Yeah. Does AI actually make us better in any way? Is there anything that AI accomplishes now that we couldn't already accomplish without it? No. And I think that's one of the key questions that people are going to start discussing in the future is how much should we really implement AI into society? Because we can do the stuff that AI can do, but the argument can be made that AI can do a lot of the stuff that we already do at a much better rate. And that's scary because... What job, there are certain jobs, obviously, like plumbing, carpentry, that type of stuff will always be there. But what job can you really not, what job can not really be replaced by AI? There's, there's going to be a handful, like you used to mention, like those those trades, healthcare workers, stuff like that. But we're already seeing not AI, as, um, but robots. We've yeah. seen robots coming into manufacturing and developing, and they're taking over tons of line jobs. Tons of people that would would have taken ten people to do one robot can do, and one person's man, manning it. So it is it saves people money or people money that way, and that's where there's like people will argue there's issues with capitalism because all they want is money and mm-hmm. how to lower their costs and sell stuff for more and make more money, increase the profits. Yeah, but eventually that's going to have to even out, and it's like hey, there's still humans on this earth that need jobs and. We're, we're going to lose right. that. It becomes an ethical question and really, honestly, a moral question because, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're totally capitalistic and you just want profit shares, you know, why wouldn't you just switch to AI completely if you could? It makes sense. You're making more money. You program it once, have one person run it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to deal with it. You don't have to deal with – when you have people, you have to deal with – different personalities different people when they're when they're sick you have to rely on people to be at work be attentive at work not fight with everybody work together as a team there's a lot of variables that come into play ai doesn't clock out either ai never clocks out it 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 doesn't need time off it will work over time you don't need to pay it until it turns it doesn't complain to you about rolling over its pto the next year (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't need off on friday to go golfing it's working yeah, 100%. You know what? You know what's really cool about how we're talking right now? AI couldn't do this. No. You know, we're just going off the boat, going off the line, going off the course, just saying random things, driving a little bit. Like Brian just kind of did something. I don't know what he was doing, but he's doing <laughs> something. Yeah, it's that human aspect, like we mentioned, we'll, you can never add that in, even though how, no matter how good AI actually gets. Yeah. We're human. We're gonna seek human interaction, and AI is always gonna try to replicate that. But it's it, it'll always fall short. And we also talked about in the beginning of the podcast: is this making us better? Is this making us lazy? And living in the, the age of technology and AI and how the internet is, we also need to know like find a balance. We need to know how to use it. We need to use it as an actual tool rather than just go, oh no, AI is gonna take over the world. I'm gonna just go collect my welfare check and eat rich crackers all day i think ai proves that convenience can go too far right that's what ai 100 percent does when does life become too convenient when you don't have to do anything and you struggle as a result of it mentally speaking ai could probably write a better book than i'm just gonna throw out a number probably 80 percent of people out there 80 percent of people couldn't write a better book than ai i'm not you know, I'm not disincluding myself from that group. There's probably stuff that AI could probably write that is way better than what I could write. Yeah, it's just gonna miss that, like we talked about that human element. It's gonna be, it'll be, it'll take all the stories and like, oh, this is probably what would work. Yeah. But it's, there's there's no authenticity to it. And I think as a society, we need to realize we have a lot in in life that AI and technology has made way easier. We have the wealth of technology in our phone. We can – wealth of knowledge. We can do whatever we want. We can look up anything and have it instantaneously. We need to use these tools to become better, to learn, to be the best person we can be, excel in our jobs, to 
be the best husband, the best father, the best brother, friend that we can be and flourish. You need to be the master over AI. Because if you aren't able to control your life, something or someone else will. They will control your life over you because you are unable to do it yourself. And this is one of the dangers that comes with AI. It's also one of the good things that could come with AI. Like we said, there are good aspects to what this can do for you. But it's very easy to let something like this just simply control you. You could, you become completely rely, reliant on it. I mean, how much has Google taken over our everyday lives just by being a resource that we're constantly going back to? 100%. That is 100% going to be what AI will turn into. How much more are we going to become more reliant on AI and not just take more stuff for ourselves? I mean, you know, AI is going to be able to do your job better than you can. But you should be using AI to make you better at your job so that AI can't replace you, right? Yeah, but people are, people are lazy. People want the easy way out. People want convenience. We talked about that last podcast. They want the easy way out every single time. No one wants to work. They want to sit home, get a check, and go from there. I, I think it's also a funny story that I saw on, it was on Facebook. There was this guy that had his job. And he had to, like, make these reports on, like, a monthly or weekly basis, whatever it was. He <laughs> – what he did is he would get his assignment. He hired a guy <laughs> from India to – the guy from India did his job. And then he would turn it in. And he would work, like, a couple hours a week, getting paid his full-time salary and paying the dude quarters. Oh, my gosh. It was – it was just – It's terrible. It was hilarious. It's terrible. Yeah. It was hilarious. So, I mean, that's what AI does. I mean, I don't even know how much AI really is already impl implemented into what people do with their jobs and stuff like that. But, I mean, I, I feel like in the workforce, everyone in the workforce has used ChatGPT at least once. Oh, if not more. Yeah. I mean, you can use it to write better better emails. You, mm -hmm. you can use it like, hey, oh, what's this regulation again? Uh, oh, bam, right there. And then you could also tell you how to implement it or how it's supposed to be implemented. Mm -hmm. And it's it's super cool, but we need to use that not as a crutch, but as a way to learn, like how the internet was meant. It's not meant for you just not to know anything anymore and just put all your thoughts and logic into a device, but for, to add as a tool, oh, okay, okay, yeah, I learned this once. Yeah, cool, yeah, I got this mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I think it could be a really good like auditing tool where you need some third party check on something that you're doing. It could be like a contract that you're writing or a you know, big spreadsheet that you're writing or something like that. And you just input the code into some sort of like AI software program and say like, Hey, is any of this is all of this matching up? AI is really good for like checking up on that if you can't just immediately get to your manager or something like that or someone higher up in your company and it will tell you like, Hey, you've got two things that contradict right here and you need to fix that you know ai can be really good for that sort of stuff yeah. like it can really make our work life a lot better and a lot you know more convenient the question it's, is like how far does that convenience go the 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 only thing that i will what i say that i love about technology like hardcore that i'm going to argue everyone with all you math teachers out there okay not letting kids use calculators. He's speaking from the soul right this here. Is, this is deep. We all have calculators in our phone. Yes, basic math and arithmetic is very important. But we don't need to be doing this crazy stuff. We can do it on our phone. Okay? Relax. All right. I'm off my soapbox now. Okay. That was great. <laughs> it, 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 hit, it hit. It really hit. This, is, this subject is it's going to be ever-changing. AI is going to continue evolving. We're going to see a lot more issues and a lot more great things that come from this. We need to remember at our, like I always talk about this, our base. Make sure you're bettering yourself. Use, use, use the tools that you can and continue to pushing in a certain direction. Find, find your faith, find your family, and go. How do you make your life better? That's the simple question. How do you make your life better? And it's not always make your life more convenient. That is not the way that you make your life better. And like we've said, with a lot of stuff that humans make, it's always made with the intention of usually making something better, right? There's usually, there's a problem, and we as humans are very good at coming up with solutions to those problems. It's just that the solutions themselves are not always good. They might be helpful, but they're not always good. 
And AI is very helpful, but AI is not always good. There's a lot of evil that we've kind of discussed that can that it can go, right? That it can do. But like we've also said, there's a lot of really good things that AI can do to help us out. And we need to make sure that we're always only using AI for those good things. Otherwise, we're going to lose out on the the human aspect of our lives. AI is not an excuse to be lazy. AI is not an excuse not to learn. AI is not an excuse to not do your job and, and not an excuse to be lazy again. That's just it's huge. Don't be lazy. Use it as a tool. This is a good place to end it, Ben. AI is crazy. I'm interested to see what else it's able to do. I'm interested to see what are the deep fakes when they start making deep fakes of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember, AI is like a sword. You make it, don't kill people, just make a sandwich. Just just make a sandwich. Like and subscribe. Let us know what else we should talk about. If AI is good, we're going to get guests on here soon. Oh, yeah. We, it's coming up. Yeah, we have a couple, a couple scheduled. We have a list of people we want to get on. Some dreamers. Nick D, if you're watching, we want to talk to you. <laughs> Big D. Yeah, maybe uh, podcast 352, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, that's what we set it for, so it should be should be scheduled. Yeah, we, we sent it over to him. Yeah, so. Joe Rogan will be 500, I think, episode 500. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But this was great. Yeah. Hey, we'll we're out. See you next week. <laughs>